Hi, and welcome once again to Professor Black's History. Of course, we always come to you from the shadows until black history and African-American history is taken out of the shadows of history textbooks. Now, we also come to you just to give you some names of people you might want to look up sometime to get some inspiration. We're not here to give you a complete history lesson, although you might get some facts out of us. Now, most people have heard of the Underground Railroad. But many people have a misconception of what the Underground Railroad really was. It was not this vast network of people and places that slaves could go to help them escape. It was a loosely knit organization and some of those people were able to help slaves escape. But most slaves actually escaped on their own. The slave owners promoted the notion of an Underground Railroad because they didn't want most people to understand that slaves were smart enough to escape on their own. As I said, most slaves escaped by themselves. But one couple who escaped was Ellen and William Craft. Ellen and William Craft made a daring escape. And remember, when these people escaped from slavery, they were risking their life for freedom. Ellen Craft was born in Clinton, Georgia in 1826. Uh, now, her mother was a mixed-race slave, and her father was the slave owner. So Ellen was born with a very, very fair skin. She looked a lot like her other brothers and sisters, quote, uh, on the plantation. Uh, her brothers and sisters by her masters and, her, uh, and the mistress of the plantation. Now, when she was 11, she was made a, we a wedding present to her stepsister and sent to Macon, Georgia. And she was, like I said, when she got there, most people could not tell that she was not a white person. They thought she was white, but she was an African-American slave. Now, she grew up on the plantation, and another person on the plantation was a man named William Kraft. Uh, he was born in Macon, Georgia, and William was allowed to work as a carpenter on the, in the city of Macon, and he was allowed to keep some of the money that he earned by being hired out. He was the property of Dr. Robert Collins, who was the slave owner of Ellen as well. And after growing up on the plantation, Ellen and William fell in love. When Ellen was 20 years old, they got married. Now, William was saving money to buy his own freedom. However, after he got married, he realized he was not going to have enough money for he and Ellen both, and they wanted to start a family, but they refused to have their children be born and raised in slavery. They planned an escape during the Christmas holidays of 1848. Now, they made a daring escape. They disguised Ellen as a white man, a young white man, a sickly young white man. Uh, the arm was in a sling because, of course, being a slave, she did not know how to read or write. So that would keep her from having to write the, uh, on the hotel registers. Also, they wrapped her face in a poultice to make it look like she had a really bad toothache or something like that, and she really couldn't talk that much. So she was dressed as a very slick, sickly old man, a young man, and William was her slave. So they traveled by steamer, they traveled by train, they traveled by ferry, and on Christmas Day in 1848, they arrived in Philadelphia, and they were befriended by the Quakers and some free blacks. Now, of course, you've got to imagine how that must have felt for them arriving there on Christmas Day. That was probably the best Christmas present they ever had. Now, the crash left America and went to England in 1850 after the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, which demanded that slaves be returned to the South if they were captured. And uh, they learned to read and write, and they spent 19 years in England, and they had five children. Um, they also earned speaking fees by giving lectures on slavery in the United States and about how they escaped. In 1886, they returned to the U.S. and they started a school for African American youth in Georgia. Uh, they died, or Ellen died, in 1897 and William died in 1900. But these brave and courageous people took on the challenge of getting to freedom. And they were not afraid to risk their life, but they were very smart and ingenious in how they did it, like many of the slaves who were able to escape. From these people, you should be able to get some inspiration about how you can escape whatever is trapping you and move on to your type of freedom. 
We'll talk to you next time on Professor Black's History. I know you're going to like what we have to say.